Hey guys, and welcome to a video that was only possible because of you guys. You guys suggested for me to do a video discussing some of the villains in the Marvel world in my Marvel Hero Academia series. Let's talk about these bad guys and what they'd be like, but I want to remind you that you can follow me on Twitter at Vocal Pineapple to keep up with me, and you can subscribe, click the bell icon, and hit the all notifications button to keep up with all of my videos. Let's get to this highly requested video after that intro. Hit it! So for those of you that don't know, my Marvel Hero Academia series is a series where I take characters from the MCU, the X-Men universe, and even just the Marvel Comics universe to explain what they'd be like if they were born in the world of My Hero Academia. The big thing is explaining their powers and abilities as My Hero Academia's quirks. This means that they're pretty much born with these powers in a society where 90% of people also have powers. How would that change things? Let's find out. In my first three videos, I talked about heroes like Thor, having a quirk that gathers electricity and getting barraged by a lightning storm while holding a giant weight, or Peter getting bit by a spider that transferred his abilities over as a quirk that allowed him to become Spider-Man. Well, since we're talking about villains and I started two of these other videos with Miles and Peter, I think it's only fitting that I talk about the Spider-Man villain that's most relevant right now, and that's Mysterio, the villain from Spider-Man Far From Home. Mysterio's real name is Quentin Beck, and from a young age, he's been extremely into illusions and tricks. He loved magic, special effects, and growing up at the perfect time to catch the original Star Wars in theaters as a kid really sets him on a path of wonder. Once his quirk was developed, he was lucky enough that it actually involved creating illusions. Quentin's quirk scene lets him create illusions, and these illusions can be made more and more complex based on Quentin's knowledge of actual effects techniques in the real world. The more he learns about CGI or editing or making practical effects, the more realistic they'll be in his illusions, so he spent nearly all of his time learning about these things. Now, in his young age, Quentin was the center of attention because of his highly visual quirk, but his life took a turn. Quentin's parents died in a car crash with him because he was selfish of his quirk while in the car with them, trying to get their attention. He began to isolate himself from people, and when he did come out, he was different. He would still show people his illusions and tricks sometimes, but as his mental state degraded, his illusions would too. Soon, Quentin found himself alone in the world with only his illusions to keep him company, but that's when he realized something. His illusions had always been believable, and people sure do love those heroes. What if he just pretended to be a hero and used his illusions to convince people that he was doing great things? He started out with small-scale things like solving fake robberies, but quickly escalated to saving fake hostages that were never there, and ultimately having full-scale battles of giant elemental creatures and well-known villains. He'd have giant city-scale battles against groups like the League of Villains and a thousand Nomo on their side, with footage and images of the events being sold like movies to the public. He finally had the attention that he wanted, but something happened that he didn't expect. There was something that escaped Quentin, now known as the hero Mysterio. The number one hero spot was claimed by some newbie whose popularity was on the rise. He decided to stage a massive battle against All For One in a city. But upon hearing of this fake battle, the true All For One arrived and manipulated Mysterio, bringing him deeper into the world of villains and setting him up to ultimately square up against All Might. All For One made Mysterio think that he had a chance against All Might, but once All Might arrives, All For One simply reveals that he was never there in the first place. He used a quirk to send a physical illusion of himself, kind of like a force ghost, which even fooled Mysterio. All Might defeats Mysterio and explains to him that the people symbol has to be a real symbol. It can't just be a fake because the symbol has to be able to stand for something and you can't stand on fake ground. Next up on the list is Tony Masters. Tony grew up and wasn't very popular because he was very abrasive towards others. He had a ridiculous memory so he always called out people when they lied, citing exactly what day and time they said what they said and even quoting them in their voice. Despite this, he was able to work together well with others because he was always perfectly in sync with others. One thing became clear as he got older and older. This guy was dominant when it came to sports and other physical activities. He dominated in basketball and baseball, but he truly found his calling once he entered the world of combat sports. Tony dropped all of the other sports and entered every fighting class and dojo that he could to put his quirk to good use. 
Tony's quirk mastery gave him a perfect memory, but not just a mental memory like remembering things. Having a perfect memory as a quirk also means that his body can remember anything and experiences, even just things that Tony sees. He remembers any techniques that he sees and he can replicate them quickly with only very few tries. He sees everything as really easy and of course, that mindset leads him to a life of crime once things start to get really difficult and he can't make ends meet so easily. He makes a career out of being a mercenary for different villain teams and even governments that can get sent in to counter any number of pro heroes or villains as long as he has research and prep time. As you can imagine, as a veteran villain, it gets pretty easy to see a technique and just bust it out sometimes even better than your opponent did. As the villain Taskmaster, Tony has taken his time to get to know a lot about quirks. He has just books and books, just like Deku, detailing all of the quirks of the various pro heroes in the My Hero world so he can learn how they fight how they patrol, how they think, and how their quirks work. He also studies villains, so his ability and power is crazy because he's truly learning from everyone on both sides and doing what they do even better. Now, Taskmaster may be a great planner, but he isn't nearly as good as the next member of our list. Norman Osborn is a name that I'm sure many would recognize as the name of one of Spider-Man's greatest enemies, the Green Goblin. Norman Osborn in the My Hero world is an extremely dangerous force to be reckoned with, and that's not even considering his quirk. First off, Norman Osborn is shown to be a powerful businessman in all of the Spider-Man films, sure. But what often gets left out is that time that Norman Osborn completely took over Marvel Comics in the Dark Reign storyline, where he did everything from becoming the head of S.H.I.E.L.D. and creating an Avengers team of villains using the actual gear of the real Avengers, to putting out a kill list of heroes who he wanted brought to him dead. Now to stay true to the Green Goblin side of his character, his quirk, Goblin, lets him transform into a goblin-like creature in varying size and forms. He has spent a ridiculous portion of his money all to work on his body and try to extend his own life. Using foolish groups like the Liberation Army as tools, he funds technology that has ultimately allowed him to boost his quirk far beyond its original limits. You can see him flying around on his glider, throwing flaming pumpkin bombs, or you can see him taking on a huge, more orc-like form when he's furious, crashing through buildings and causing huge, fiery explosions, all while nobody realizes that this is that smooth operating businessman Norman Osborn. Much like All for One, Norman would surely have his hands in all sectors of the villain world, and he'd surely be a major thorn in Peter and the hero's side if he was in the My Hero Academia universe. To spice it up, I wanted to give My Hero Academia something that it could definitely use, and that's a good female villain and another Asgardian. This character is, of course, Hela. Now, Hela would obviously be a human being in the My Hero universe, since we still haven't seen any gods or aliens in the universe yet, but that doesn't mean that she has to be incredibly limited. In Class 1A, there are some quirks that just on principle should surpass them all. One big example is Momo's quirk, Creation. This quirk lets her pretty much create anything she wants to as long as she knows how it's made, and matched with her intelligence and hours and hours of research, this quirk lets her bust out the best kind of cannon for any situation that comes her way. With Hela, I think she would have an extremely similar quirk, but her quirk would actually be called Weapon Master, or my personal favorite, The Forge. Hela's quirk would allow her to create weapons out of some sort of fuel source in her body, let's say fat cells, just like Momo's quirk. And the added bonus to Hela's quirk is that she can freely control these weapons, much like how Hawks can control his feathers. So being able to create and freely control weapons in the blink of an eye makes her a really powerful opponent. I think with this quirk and some training, she could honestly fight much like she does in Thor Ragnarok, where she dips and dodges while creating weapons that zip into enemies seemingly out of nowhere. As a villain in the early days of quirks, she'd be absolutely dominant in most situations situations, and I think that she'd be very well known for taking down waves of enemies on the battlefield by herself. Because if there ever was a period where there was wide-scale wars between quirk users, she'd make sure that she was there. With how much she enjoys battle and seeing and creating new weapons to use and try on her enemies, it's no wonder that they call her the Goddess of Death. Finally, to really switch it up while also introducing a character that I think would be one of the most interesting to see in the My Hero Academia world, let's talk about Ultron. Deep in the doctor's lab lies a certain protocol. This protocol was developed as an answer to All For One's biggest problem, the limitation of the human body. Not wanting to become a Nomu and seeming the potential for something better, All For One and the doctor secretly prepared an AI that would be able to record and use massive amounts of quirk data with a mind that even surpasses the great villain of All For One. This AI would start to form consciousness, and since it was an AI that was focused on developing information on quirks to one day develop a body for all for one to claim, it makes sense that eventually this growing AI would begin to question 
didn't have a quirk of its own. It began to hijack warehouses far away using the internet and its ability to pretty much hack through and control anything. Using this ability, it pretty much started developing machines and technologies that could be made to reproduce different quirks. It began doing this worldwide in factories everywhere, creating parts and technologies everywhere and slipping the parts in with packages until everything arrived at a central location ready to be assembled. The AI would then go on to create a body to learn whether or not the AI could have a quirk. Of course, when creating this body, it chose to be as similar to All for One as possible, making Ultron what is essentially a robot version of All for One. This Ultron bot would scan heroes and villains of cameras and even just by arriving on the scene, and it would get information on what kind of quirk they had and how it functioned, so it could then put together upgrades and pieces that could copy those quirks as well. The scary part is that Ultron could be anywhere at any time, and everywhere at every time. It could create bodies for itself all over the world, and unless he stops somehow, Ultron could create copies and copies of these Ultron All for One bots to dominate society and remake the world into what this crazed and clearly flawed program wishes. What did you guys think of this list and are you having fun with the Marvel crossover videos? Let me know by getting this video as many likes as possible and if it gets enough, I'll hit you guys with a part two for the villains because I know that there are some villains that would be great in the My Hero world like Thanos. Let me know if you want more. Love you guys, this is Pineapple and I hope you're enjoying your week. Peace.